throughout the entire history of the Iraq War, who was the guy financing or underwriting or patronizing jihadists flowing into Iraq more than anybody else in the Middle East? Bashar al-Assad. This guy was underwriting al-Qaeda in Iraq up until 2009. In fact, what would happen is if you were a jihadist in Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, you would fly into Damascus International Airport. And there was a, actually a bus terminal that would ferry you into eastern Syria where you would be domiciled by an al-Qaeda in Iraq cleric who was working cheek by jowl with Assad's Mukhabarat or intelligence services and then would send you across the border into Iraq to target the Americans or the Iraqis or whomever. Actually, the bus uh, depot in Damascus was located, guess where? Right across the street from the U.S. Embassy. So this was happening all under the watch of the U.S. government. David Petraeus, Ryan Crocker, who was then U.S. ambassador to Iraq, were prevailing upon Assad, please shut your border, stop this relationship with jihadism. In 2009, according to a former Iraqi intelligence officer, one of the good guys, um, he had a guy in Zabadani, a town in north of Damascus, wearing a wire, uh, a spy. And the spy sat in on a meeting that consisted of al-Qaeda in Iraq, Saddam's Ba'ath Party agents, and the Syrian security services, planning terrorist attacks not even against the Americans, but against Iraqi state institutions. So again, the health ministry, the finance ministry, all of these weeks later were blown up in these spectacular attacks, vehicle-borne IEDs that left huge craters in the ground. So this is important to remember because the Syria uh, revolution begins, or the protest movement begins in 2011. From day one, Assad's line is this. I am fighting not protesters or Democrats, I am fighting al-Qaeda. And it's al-Qaeda sponsored by the United States, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. Truly a coalition of the willing, if ever there were one, right? The problem was, how do you, how do you win the media narrative when you're shooting children? I mean, 12-year-old girls sniped through the eye by, by the, the security services. How do you win the media narrative when, when members of your own military, remember that the Syrian military, at the officer level, it's mostly Alawites because they benefited from this patronage system. They were promoted above the Sunnis. But the Sunni conscripts were the ones who were actually carrying the, the packs and the guns and going out and doing the fighting. They would be sent into territories and told, you're, fi you're going to fight terrorists. Except when they got there, they weren't terrorists. There were people marching in the streets with banners and saying, you know, we, we want the downfall of the regime. So the military refused to open fire. The Mukhabarat came in and said, if you don't open fire on them, we're going to open fire on you. The first clashes and defections occurred actually in Idlib province in 2011 because the military refused to shoot peaceful unarmed protesters. So Assad starts losing the war of uh, ideas. So what does he do? 2011, he declares a general amnesty for what he pretends are political prisoners. In fact, a lot of the jihadis who he had once sent over into Iraq and then arrested when they came back to Syria were let out of prison. And the three top Islamist brigades or, or rebel units on the ground up until recently, um, the, the commanders of all three were former inmates of Sednaya prison in Damascus. They were let out in May of 2011 by Bashar al-Assad. Why did he do this? Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a Middle East expert to figure it out. He knew that as, as long as this campaign, this war of attrition was going on, actually a very brutal state suppression of a, of a protest movement, people would radicalize. People would turn to the guys with the long black beards, promising them not even heaven on earth or, or you know, virgins in the afterlife, but just saying to them, this guy came and he raped your daughter or he threw your son into a prison and electrocuted his genitals. We're going to go blow him up. And the people would say, have at it. You know, we think of ISIS as the most barbaric and brutal organization in the Middle East. Let me tell you, anything you've seen, anything you've read in newspapers about what they've done, Assad has done that and worse. Burning people alive, Assad's militias, Assad Shabiha, these are mercenary gangs responsible for some of the worst massacres. They lock whole Sunni families in their homes and set the house on fire and let the families cook alive. You're just not seeing it on CNN.